Hello, welcome back. This is Jeff Byers, and I'm going to take you through the process of bringing your object from my Into Substance Painter. Um, we're going to go ahead. I'm not going to show you how to texture. This is not a texturing video, so you'll have to do that. Watch another video for that. Um, but I'm going to show you how to export into Maya so we can get it back into Unreal. So that's the process we're going to uh, create. So we'll have a series of videos here, so watch them all. Um, we're going to go File, New, and we're going to make sure that we have ASM PBR Metallic Roughness selected. With that, I'm going to go ahead and select my object. Let's go ahead and get that opened up. And we want the resolution to be 4096. Of course, you can choose whatever resolution you want. Um, we're using UDM Tile, so we need to have this check mark. Use UV Tile Workflow and make sure you have Convert UV Tiles into Individual Texture Sets texture sets <laughs> and go ahead and click on OK and that should open it up and you should see your uh, texture set list here and each one of these texture lists um, is our UDEM tiles so you can see what is in each one of them you can turn them off and on to show uh, what the, where, where they're actually at, which is kind of nice. Okay. And each one of these texture set lists has its own layer. So um, that's how you can separate your materials. Um, anyway, without, uh, without actually masking anything, it works out for me. Um, you can, you can do the workflow of masking. That's fine. Whatever you, whatever you want to, whatever you want to do. And it works for me. So if you're going to do materials, um, just basic materials, you can drag and drop those anytime you want on them um, to each one of your layers until you're all textured. Um, but I prefer to use uh, smart materials. Um, they, they have a more advanced uh, material setup. Um, and to, to use those, though, you have to have, you have to bake a high poly onto a low poly, but I'm going to bake, I'm going to use my low poly as the high poly, so I'm going to go to mode, I'm going to go to bake mesh maps, okay, and everything looks okay, um, except we don't need a world space normal and we don't need an ID map, so I'm going to turn those off, um, I'm going to set the resolution resolution up to 4096, I'm not going to change the dilation width, um, I'm not going to use a cage. That's something you guys can customize. You can have a custom cage and, and do that in Maya, bring it in and use that custom cage, but I don't have one. Uh, I'm going to keep the max frontal distance and the rear distance this at 0 0.01 because I'm just going to use a low poly for the high poly mesh. Okay. If you have a high poly mesh, you go ahead and, and find it here. Click on that. And you may want to mess around with the max frontal and max rear distance if you have a high poly uh, mesh to bake. Okay. With that done, everything is set up. And just click on um, Bake Selected Textures. And this may take a while depending on um, how big of a model you have and how high resolution it is. But anyway, just be patient. And we'll be back in just a second. Okay, we're back. It looks like everything's uh, baked up. So I'm going to go ahead and click on return to painting mode. And now you should be able to drag and drop some really cool smart materials onto your object. And the idea about smart materials is that they do include a um, basically scratches and paint peels and wear and tear which you wouldn't find in a regular material. So if I click on one of these, I just uh, go ahead and drag and drop it on there. You can see that it's using the curvature maps to create wear and tear, which is really awesome. And, um, it, and it makes it a lot less time consuming for you to actually recreate that and scratch those off um, in layers. And um, it just makes it a lot more automated. So. Smart materials are great, and this again, this is not a texturing uh, tutorial, but that's how you can create or use the smart materials, which are more advanced than the regular materials you would find in this area here. Okay, so once you have everything done, I'm going to go ahead and pull in my uh, completely textured um, crate, 
and let's go ahead and do that. So I'm going to go to open. I'm going to go ahead and dis discard that. And I'm going to go ahead and open up my crate that I have finished. There we go. And it's all textured using smart materials. And uh, normal maps under the textures to create all of the details that you see in here. So it's pretty cool. Um, so when you get it all done, uh, what you want to do is you want to go ahead and export the materials, uh, the textures you have finished. Okay. So I'm going to go to file and then I'm going to go to export textures. And there's several ways you can do this. There's no wrong way, but I'm just going to show you one way. Of course, there's other routes you can take. And um, I'm going to go ahead and the first thing you want to do is you want to find your output directory. Just click on that and that will open up the output directory. You make sure you get into the right directory because it's going to put it where it wants to put it and you may never find it. So I'm going to go get into my hard drive. I'm going to find uh, my texture or my project folder. Um, so here it is and I'm going to put it right on the outside of this or excuse me, I should put it in the source images, shouldn't I? And you can see I've, I've kind of downloaded and made some folders Okay, one sci-fi targets, one's the JPEG targets. I'm gonna go ahead and and do another uh, selection folder. I'm just gonna put it in there, and I've gotta click on PBR metal metallic roughness. It's just the default. Um, so we want a, a specific series of uh, texture maps, and um, we'll take you through that process. And they're gonna create maps for each one of these. What I have found is that each one of these um, UV UDM tiles and the texture maps are about 48 megabytes to 50 megabytes per texture. So if there's going to be four per UDM tile, so you can add that up. So I think I ended up having around 800 megabytes all total of textures with non-compressed, uh, which is PNG. Targa. If you have compressed, they're really small. Uh, compressed would be JPEG. And JPEG are awesome because um, Unreal will, will you, you can use them in Unreal and it take, takes up a lot less space. I think I ended up with less than 28 megabytes <laughs> and compared to the 800 megabytes. So you have to make that choice. Um, so whether you choose PNG, JPEG, or Targa, they'll all be. Uh, you can use them all in either one of them into um, Unreal. So you'll, you'll be fine. Okay, just pick one. I'm going to do PNG this time around. And again, output templates. Um, whoa, we need to make sure we're at PBR Metallic Roughness. And we do see that it gives us some extra ones we don't need. Now, um, be careful what you're deleting. Um, we don't need an emissive map. That's kind of a glow map. So I'm going to turn that off. If you need a glow map, make sure that something that glows or a material that glows, make sure you keep that on. But I'm going to turn it off. I don't need it. And then the height map is actually moves vertices around. Now, Unreal will probably use that map, but it, it takes a lot of resource to do that. So I'm not going to do that. I use, I, I'm counting on the normal map to show all my my uh, details okay so I'm gonna turn that off don't need that one so we just have four um, and we got to have those four you have to have a base color roughness metallic and a normal map for your PBR to work properly okay so list of exports you see what it's going to export those are all the maps that's a lot of maps and these are 48 to 50 megabytes per map okay all right so just keep that in mind at 4096 okay uh, JPEGs are going to be a lot, a lot less resource intensive. JPEGs, so you can choose that too as well. I I like to do all three of them. Okay, I have the hard drive space and just to kind of have a backup. You know, I do all three. It doesn't take long to do it. So that's what I've got so far. Okay, nothing. It's pretty simple. Okay, and I'm going to go ahead and export. It shouldn't take too long. Um, my computer's pretty fast. And there you go. It, sh it gives me all green, no red. That's really good. Okay. And then go ahead and close. 
that's this part of it so everything's done now we go back into Maya and we map all the textures on into Maya all right I'll show you how to do that in the next video